which is going to take us a little bit further down the idea of how we perceive sound. And we talked about what sound is, this, this pressure wave of air where we have areas of compression, areas of rare refraction. We talked about how it's our brain that interprets that sound. When we think about sound and our perception of sound, we not only talk about pitch or the frequency of that sound, but we talk about how loud it is, right? How intense that sound is. If you're at a rock concert, it's super loud. So if you stand up front by the speakers, whoo, you're blown away. But if you stand further back, it's not as bad. It's still bad, not good for you. But if you stand further back, it's, it's just not as bad. The loudness changes depending on where we are from the sound source. And our intuitions about that are probably really good. The further I go away, the less intense that sound is. Distance is separating me from this source of sound, this source of power, right? This energy that is being produced by the speaker or, or the sound source, whatever that may be, the horn, whatever that may be. And so we're going to look at sound, sound intensity, power of sound, and an intensity level and how that all relates not only mathematically in the sense of physics and our definitions of what those things mean, but also in our perception and why we define them in physics, which actually is based on the physiology a little bit on the perception. So we're going to talk first about intensity. That's going to be our foundation. Now, intensity in general, in general definition of intensity, is the amount of energy that passes through an area. All right, the amount of energy that passes through a point, an area, location, at a given amount of, at a given time. We're going to define energy, excuse me, intensity with this capital letter I. So if we put that description into a mathematical equation, we have that energy, excuse me, intensity is equal to the energy that passes through an area at a given time. The energy through an area at a given time. Now, we talked about power back when we talked about work and energy. And if you recall, power, this sort of fat P, was equal to the amount of work done per time. But work, we know, is just the amount of energy. So power, remember, is really related to energy and time. So if I think about power, how powerful a speaker is, right? We talk about it in that way. My intensity then turns into the power per area. Now, I think this helps us think about it a little bit better because let's imagine that we have a source. So here I have, just, I have a speaker sitting on a stool, all right? And it goes beep, really loud. Well, how does that energy get dissipated as it travels through the air? If here's my source, I'm going to look at now at a kind of a top-down view. If I'm standing really close to that source, I know that intensity is a lot. That area, it dissipates out in all directions. That area is related to how much power, how much energy per time as it's moving through, it moves through that area. And as I go a bit further away, what happens to my area? Like it's bigger. The larger the area, the less the intensity for that energy that's traveling through time. And so we find that intensity is related to the distance away from that source. But it's not just the distance, it's the area. We know that the area, if I kind of continue in my three, or sorry, that two dimensional, that spherical or circular representation outside the source, we know the area of this space is equal to pi r squared. That means that the intensity 
decreases with the square of the radius, not just the distance away. So the further I get away from my source, the intensity goes down by a square of the distance, a lot. And that's kind of our experience. If I get a little bit away from a really loud source, it's clearly much less intense than if I get a far away from that source. So intensity, we're not going to like go into a whole lot of detail, but I want you to understand that the intensity, how much energy I have from a source dissipates as I go out because now that energy per time is over a larger area. And so my intensity, my power, the amount of energy that passes through a point, this point versus that point, at a given amount of time, my power is relate, or excuse me, doesn't change because it's now spread out over an area, the intensity does. Okay, so intensity is important. Um, what we really talk about is how loud something is. How is loudness related to intensity, right? How is loudness related to intensity? We actually, because of the physiology, and I'll, I'll come back to that in just a minute, when we talk about energy, uh, intensity with sound, what we're actually talking about, it mostly, is what we refer to as the intensity level. And I know you're going to have heard of intensity level, possibly, I hope you have, have heard of intensity level, in terms of the decibel scale. So we talk about loudness in terms of the decibel. You don't wanna be at a rock concert because the decibel level is too high. The loudness and the intensity level is too high. So we're going to introduce the idea of intensity level as well. All right. This is our sound level. And these are our decibels. So related, I mean, that's our unit, but it's the decibel scale, the sound intensity scale. We're not going to derive the sound intensity scale for you, but it's related to how much intensity we have, that makes sense, relative to a base level of intensity. So a, our base level, our lowest detectable intensity level, what is the lowest intensity level of sound we can hear? And of course, depends on where we are, right? The lowest level of intensity, true intensity, power per area, of sound we can detect, how much above that are we? That's really what intensity level is all about. And it turns out it's not a linear scale. This idea of loudness physiologically isn't linear. It's a, it's a logarithmic scale. And so I'm going to give you that relationship and talk a little bit about why it's a logarithmic scale and then we'll practice using it. So our intensity level, intensity level, not intensity, our intensity level we use beta as our variable for intensity level, is equal to 10 times the log, so our log base scale, of the true intensity of the sound relative to intensity not, where intensity not is our lowest detectable sound, physiologically, but it has a value, it's a constant, and it's 10 to the minus 12 watts per meter squared. Remember, power is in watts, power per area, intensity, power per area, watts per meter squared. So I naught is a constant value. And what we're doing is we're saying, how much above that base value am I? Now, why is it a logarithmic scale? Turns out, we're not really good at determining intensity levels. Our physiology is really good at determining frequencies, as we've discussed. We're not that great at determining intensity level. So when I have something that's double the loudness, when I say, oh my gosh, I am, that is twice as loud as the other, it turns out is doubling our loudness perception, what we perceive as a twice twice as loud is really 10 times the intensity. What we perceive as another doubling, so I've doubled my loudness 
and now I just, I just double it again, the actual intensity of that second doubling is 100 times more. So we perceive loudness in the logarithmic scale, which is kind of cool. And so we define loudness, sound intensity level, as the logarithmic scale. All right, this, it's all about our perception. This has units of decibels. So we use the unit of decibels as our logarithmic scale, as our sound intensity level scale. So let's just practice using this equation in an example, and then um, we'll be all set with recognizing what intensity is, power per area, intensity level, which is a loudness factor, how we perceive sound, and it's logarithmic again because that loudness, our perception of loudness actually is in that log, log rhythmic scale. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to erase this. When my children were little, I have four children, and when they were little, hoof da, did they all fuss? And if one started to cry, they all start to cry, right? It's sort of like when you yawn. We haven't even mentioned yawning. You probably are about to yawn right now. So when one starts to cry, they all start to cry. So when my youngest, Ryan Elaine, when she was a baby, do, 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 she had, she cried at an intensity of 8 times 10 to the minus 6 watts per meter squared. All right, so that was the intensity at which she cried at. What was her decibel level? What was the decibels that little Miss Ryan cried at? Did I give you the right? I'm just checking my, checking my notes here, and I, I think I did. I think I did. Okay, so her decibel level is going to be equal to 10 times the log of 8 times 10 to the minus 6 over 10 to the minus 12, or 1 times 10 to the minus 12. And we find that her decibel level is 69 decibels. All right, so she cries at 69 decibels. Now, as soon as she starts crying, Toby, the second youngest, starts to cry. All right, so now I have doubled the number of kids crying. I've doubled the number of kids crying. What happens to the intensity level? To the, yeah, my intensity level, my sound level. Well, intensity adds linearly. I'm just adding the amount of energy per space superposition. Right? I'm just adding the amount of energy. It adds linearly. So if Ryan has an intensity of 8 times 10 to the 6, and Toby also has an intensity of 8 times 10 to the minus 6 watts per meter squared. So we're just going to assume they all cry at the same intensity level. If I add those two together, of course, I get 16. And I go through the same process, so the intensity level of Ryan, this was just Ryan, so of Ryan and Toby is 10 times the log of 16 times 10 to the negative 6 over 10 to the negative 12. I find that the decibel range now is 73 decibels, not 73, 72. Same equation, plug that in. And what do we notice? We notice that with a doubling of the intensity level, if I increase the intensity, I do this a lot. I'm going to try my hardest not to. The doubling of the intensity, not the intensity level, the intensity by 2, I get an increase of 3 decibels. And I want you to go back and try this. If I now add Zachary to the mix, one more child crying, what will my decibel level be? Well, I'm not doubling it because I had two and now I only have one more. But if as soon as Zachary starts crying, Tree starts crying. So now I've gone from two kids and I've doubled it to two more kids. 
does that intensity level, 72, with all four kids crying now increase to 75? I'm going to find out it does, but I encourage you to go practice that. Seeing how this doubling increases the intensity level by a factor of three. Still want you to know how to calculate intensity level. It just gives you a little sense of some of the things that we think about in physics and how we try to generalize things. All right, and that generalization, of course, has to do with the mathematics. Okay, I'm going to do one more example for you on this idea of intensity level. Oh, you know what? I'll do that as a separate video, as a separate practice problem, just so we can break this up a little bit. Thinking again about what intensity is, using the relationship, why it's a logarithmic scale based on our perception, and being careful, which I did not always do, but I'm trying. We always have to grow in this space. Decibels are intensity level. Intensity in its draws form in physics is the amount of energy that passes through. All right, good job.